Hey all, I'm Paul Reese, an engineer with the Developer Relations Team on Google ML. And I'm Lance. I helped work on Project Gameface, which uses MediaPipe to allow people with severe physical disabilities to move a mouse cursor or do other switching just with facial gestures and movements, very slight movements. So today we actually want to dive into the underlying media pipe task that's being used for Game Face, which is called Face Landmarker. So here you can actually see Lance and I, we are appearing on the screen. You can see where the blend shapes are. And if we go into this detect.python script, this is an example that we have up on GitHub that you can try out today. So you can run this on your own computer, see how it works, and actually do some modifications to it if you want to try to use it for your own apps. Now, previously in an episode, we worked on objects, right? Like, yep. And so that was just so we could track maybe for a, a mouse cursor. But now we're talking about looking at extraneous movements that you can make with your face to add inputs for a person who can't use their hands. Exactly. So the last one we were talking about was object detection. So that was the dot that we kind of put on the forehead. You can kind of track that and use that for a little bit more of the precision of it. Whereas with this and blend shapes, we can actually do different expressions to control different aspects of the computer. Which that's huge for uh, people who are quadriplegic because you just don't have enough uh, opportunities for input on a computer. Anything you can gain is basically gravy on top. Awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at the demo. So here we actually have where we're bringing in the camera frames. So we're using CV2, bringing that in. Um, some of this is mostly for UI, so I'm not going to worry too terribly much about that. But we are able to kind of create all of that for drawing out your points, drawing out the different outlines that we have here, as well as the bars and titles that we have for the blend shapes. So I noticed my face is made out of triangles in there. What is that? So that is actually something we would call tessellation. So what we're doing right now is we have all 472 points. And if you wanted to connect them, um, at least in the UI, we have UI tools that we have already provided to say, hey, here are all these little kind of gray lines that are connecting those points. We also provide some for irises or contours. So you can see the lips and like that round part of your face is all part of the contours. And then your eyes and irises are also other utilities and connected points that we've already defined for you. So if you only needed one set or another set, you can just focus on those. Gotcha. Um... I think when we worked on game face, we used those different angles in those triangles to determine how much an eye was closed or an eyebrow was moving. So that's gotcha. pretty neat. Yeah. So that would actually kind of lead us into the idea of blend shapes. So these are going to be, let me scroll on down here. We can see the detection result has its own face blend shapes value that it's associated with. If we loop through those, we can get the category, the confidence, all kinds of fun stuff. And that's what we're drawing here with these green marks. So you can say, hey, if your eyebrows are up, you can actually see the lines here at the top where it's brow up, brow down. Or if you smile, you can see the smiling left and smiling right. And how that kind of fills in towards the bottom of this list. Um, yeah, so once you have those, you can do a variety of things with that. So if you wanted to control your mouse and do clicking based off of smiles or what have you, this would be what you would be using. Amazing. It, I mean, it's really what's needed and it can only be done by AI, by its ability to iterate over and over and over and pay attention without ever losing its spot. Yep. So yeah, there's a variety of different tools that we have. Um, and the idea there is basically that we are providing kind of the simplified version that developers can then take and run off with themselves so they can make even cooler things with this as just kind of a tool within their developer toolbox. So this is actually where we are initializing the tool that is using the underlying task model that would be used for face line markers. So rather than a standard single model, we're actually using something called a task bundle, which is taking multiple models that are chained together and using that to perform these actions. So the first one is going to detect, hey, is there even a face here? Where is it? And then we're going to check the individual landmarks that are on that face. And then we have another one that will do the blend shapes to actually say, hey, now that we know that these landmarks exist, what kind of gestures are they making and expressions and all that kind of stuff? Right. And I've heard, uh, especially for media pipe, it's not a specific face. It's looking for something that just is a face. 
So there's no private information going anywhere. Correct. Yep. Yeah, so all of this was trained with a variety of different faces to find kind of similar patterns in what you would see of where your eyes are, your nose, your lips, all that kind of thing. And then the way MediaPipe works is it is actually running completely on the device. So all of this inference, all of this information is not leaving your computer. Excellent. It's amazing. So um, what we have here is a set of base options. This is where we're going to provide the path and name for the task bundle that we're using. Once we have that, we can create a, another options file. Once we have that, we can create another options object that is going to be used specifically for face landmarks. So here we are able to associate the base options as well as give it a running mode. So in this case, we're just taking in a live camera stream rather than an individual video or an individual picture. From there, we're able to say, hey, I want to detect some X number of faces. So in this case, you can actually see that we are detecting two. But if you only needed one face, then you can just put that and then whichever one it's the most confident in is the one that it'll display in. Okay. And we also have some kind of cool things here with face detection, confidence, and face presence and tracking. So essentially, because we're running three separate models um, kind of in a sequence, if we can with some level of confidence say, hey, there's no faces here whatsoever, well, then we're not going to need to do the following processes to make it just a little bit more streamlined and quicker. Um, and then you also have the option to say, hey, do you want these blend shapes or not? So if you don't need those blend shapes, then you don't have to actually get that information. So it'll cut out one model that will kind of streamline and quicken the process as you're moving along. I love that. That way it's not trying to do two switches at once or two. Right. I love that. Yep. Cool. And then once you've set up all of that, you have your options set up, you can create the detector. So the detector itself is going to be the main object that is doing the inference for you. So this is going to say, hey, I have my model. I know exactly what I'm trying to do with it. Go ahead and call detect, get that, and then return the results. So the rest of this is really saying, hey, I have the camera open, retrieve an image frame from that stream, do a whole bunch of stuff of pre-processing it just to make sure that the image that you're reading in from your computer is going to match up to what the model is expecting. And then we can call detect async. So detecting asynchronously using a callback to say, hey, now that I have this image object, what are the results that I'm expecting to get back? Okay. From there, we have some UI things. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that. But what's happening here is we have this detection results. So when we receive this asynchronously through the callback, we can now loop through all of them and say, hey, here are my landmarks. Let's go ahead and start doing something with them. So here we can say, hey, I've got X, Y, and Z. Basically turn these into a usable format based off of those results. And then we can just start drawing onto the screen. So here you can actually see that we are drawing the face mesh uh, tessellation, which is all the little gray connected marks that we have there. So each of these already have an associated connection that's there. So it'll know, go ahead and draw those. That way you kind of end up with this mesh around your face. Gotcha. Um, we also it's got two different eyeballs. I see two different colors. Right. So we're able to tell what is your left eye, what is your right eye, be able to do stuff with that, which actually, if we go down a little bit here, we can see that we have the face mesh irises, which is what is causing this to be highlighted. So if okay. we, yeah, so if we wanted to, we can just cut out any of these sections and we would just have whatever the underlying parts are that we want to actually display. So right. actually, now, if we, oh, as a gamer, I'm just thinking I want you know, instantaneous uh, action reaction. Do we know what the, the lag time on something like this is? Yeah, so running on our computer, we can say frames per second after the processing is happening. We're actually basing this off of inference time. Okay. So we're seeing this 15 to 25 frames per second. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. So now that we've taken out that code and restarted it, you can see that we're only highlighting the irises here. So it's just going to basically use those utility functions to display what's here. But what's cool about this is it is still giving us the same exact results that we were getting beforehand. We just happen to have some utility functions in here for drawing. Okay. And, then, and we have really cool eye colors. We do have really cool eye colors. Let's see. And then from there, we actually have the ability to pull out those blend shapes. So the detection result that we were getting has these blend shapes in there because we said, hey, please give them to us. So from there, we're able to say, hey, I have this category and I have some level of confidence. So here we can see that we have smiling, eyebrows up, all sorts of other stuff that it's able to detect. So if I smile, we can actually see that this yeah. bar right here is starting to kind of expand. I guess people can't see me pointing at my screen as well. Right. So it's kind of down here at the bottom. So, And that's what's exciting to me is 
it's open to any face. It's, you don't have to train it with your specific face. Yep. So what's cool about that is we've already trained this model bundle with a variety of different faces, and then this data is never leaving your machine. So it's able to detect your face, do all this inference completely there, and it never has to go off to a server somewhere or anywhere else that you'd have to worry about privacy or anything relevant to that. Right, and it's running on computers that don't seem to be top of the line or right. from what I can see. Yep, so what's cool about this is this would actually run on a Raspberry Pi. So we've got it optimized enough that you're able to take just small IoT hardware and run with it. Nice. Yeah. So once we have the base options, we actually have the options that are relevant specifically for the face landmarker. So we're able to associate the base options with it. We can set the running mode to tell it, hey, we're working with a live camera stream rather than an individual image or a video file. Though okay. we actually support both of those. Um, from there, we can actually say, hey, I wanna work with some number of faces. So if the application you're using only needs to work with one person, great. And so this is open for anyone to use? Yep, so we have our SDKs already out there. So this works with Python, Android, web, um, iOS, and we're constantly adding more things onto it. So we actually have already announced that we have a Flutter plugin that is also being written right now. Ooh. So if you're a developer out there and it, with a big imagination, you can do a lot to change the world of disabled people or solve problems we don't even know exist yet. Yep, so actually, how about in the next video, we talk about some of the things that we could do with this just to kind of spark some developer imagination. That works for me. All right, sounds good.